I married my first husband in 1993. Um, everything was perfect. You know, we we met, we got an apartment together. He was he was Prince Charming when we first met. Everything, you know, he treated me beautifully. And then after we married, um, he would get kind of these attitudes and kind of be verbally on the board of like um, verbal abuse. Um, you know, he would say these backhanded count comments like, um, you know, these, oh, you know, your, your bracelet looks really pretty. My, uh, you know, my grandmother wore stuff like that, you know? So, uh, I thought, well, this isn't, it's not, it's not the way that I want to be treated, but I thought it was normal. I, I didn't know in relationships that, that you can speak to someone in that way. So, you know, I kind of just sort of blew it off and I laughed it off and I just kind of let it go. But then, you know, he, he would call me stupid. He would call me a bitch. He would accuse me of cheating on him all the time. Um, he would listen in on phone calls. He would separate me from my family and my friends. So I had very little contact. And he was he was mainly my my world, my one person. I said nobody else loves you but me. Um, I'm the only one who could love you. Um, you know, and that sort of thing. And then eventually it, it became physical. And it was also financial. So if I would go to the grocery store with a certain amount of money, I had to be back within an hour or I'd be in a lot of trouble. Or if I spent too much money, I would be in a lot of trouble. Um, I wasn't allowed to work. And yet he complained that I wasn't working. <laughs> um, so he would tell his friends and his family that I was lazy, that I didn't want to work, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't let me have my own income. Um, my car was suddenly his car. <laughs> There, there was a progression in the abuse that I didn't see because it was so gradual. You know, first it was first it was verbal, and then it was these little things like a backhanded slap, or you know, and then it would sort of escalate from there. And then when there was abuse, and you know, he would beat me for whatever reason it was, it would be, "I'm sorry, it'll never, ever, ever happen again. I'm so sorry. You're so beautiful. I love you. I'll change. I'll do anything for you." And then I just kind of thought, okay, we could put this past us. You know, we can, we can get through this together and everything's going to be okay. But the cycles kept going through. Um, to the, and it was to the point where I felt like I couldn't leave because, first of all, I had no financial way of leaving. I was afraid to leave because when, you know, that's the most dangerous time for a woman to leave. Is, um, that's the most dangerous time for a woman. So, um, you know, there was a lot of fear. I had nowhere to go. And even if I did, even if I did go have somewhere to go, um, you know, he would find me, he'd bring me back. And I just sort of thought, well, this is my life now, you know? And it got to the point where I just wanted to die. I thought that was my only way out. And, you know, I planned to take my own life many times and I, um, I was unsuccessful one time. <laughs> um, and what, what broke everything in 1995 was that dinner was five minutes late and he beat the crap out of me. And I ended up in a coma for six weeks. And that's how I left. Um, got a restraining order. Um, I, have, I have a wonderful husband now. I have a, you know, I'm happily remarried. There's a life after abuse. But, you know, my time spent with that taught me a lot about what abuse was. And now I can see kind of what the warning signs were. I think it's important to normalize talking about it all together because people are suffering silently. I know I definitely did. I had no one to talk to about it. I didn't think anybody would believe me. So we need to normalize it and we need to be open about these conversations because people are suffering in silence and they may hear your story and say, you know what, maybe it's time for me to leave and maybe it's time to find resources so that I can leave safely. My message is that you're not alone. I believe you. And if I can help in any way to get resources or just be someone of support, I am here.